U.S. Uh, Center for Government Operations, and it's Friday, the 25th of September. And what we're doing is having a very quick, unscheduled meeting to look at what the <clears throat> the amendments that the House made to our bill S-354. And um, we have Betsy here with us and Tucker to go through um, the what is left of 354. And then I would like to ask uh, Representative Gannon to just talk to us about why this is the result of the of our work. So if, if you can quickly tell us what is in there, what is left, and then does that make sense, committee? OK, all right. So um, Betsy Ann and Tucker, if you want to just whoever is most appropriate to tell us what's what's sure, I'll, I'll quickly do it. Uh, for the record, Betsy Ann Rask, Legislative Council, as you recall, as passed the Senate, S-354 would provide a variety of emergency provisions for the operation of state government, mostly uh, when there is a state of emergency. Uh, the House proposed a strike all amendment that was passed and message forth with to the Senate this morning. Um, it's a strike all to contain only one uh, main provision, which would allow municipal legislative bodies to vote to apply the Australian yeah. ballot system of meeting to their annual and special meetings in the year 2021 <laughs> only. Um, instead of the otherwise underlying law, which would require the voters of the municipality to first get together to vote to determine whether to apply the Australian ballot system to any of their upcoming annual or special meetings. This language would apply to uh, 2021 town meeting if the town legislative body chose to use this authority. It would also apply to other municipal meetings uh, in the year 2021. There's also a provision to waive in the year 2021 the requirement for a person to collect voter signatures in order to have the person's name placed on the ballot as a candidate in a local election only in the year 2021. And then there is language allowing the Secretary of State to waive statutory provisions or other um, deadlines in statute or in a school district's articles of agreement in order to apply the Australian ballot system to upcoming municipal meetings as necessary with the waiver authority applying to charters and articles of agreement for a school district um, if it's requested by that municipality. Effect, you'll, that language is uh, similar to the language that you enacted in Act 92 for local elections in this year. Um, it takes effect on passage. So I guess I would um, pose a couple questions here that maybe Representative Gannon can talk to us about. And um, I realize that we don't have a lot of time here, so I guess we should focus on this, but I just am curious about why why all the other provisions in there were knocked out since we'd already passed them and they've already become acts. Um, and, but, and then primarily around this, I have a couple questions and one is, um, this allows any meeting that's held in 2021. So there could be a meeting, a special town meeting in October, and there is no, no issue at all about um, the ability to meet or not meet, but the legislative body could decide that they're going to use the Australian ballot anyway, whether there is an emergency or not, because this gives them the ability to do that for any election in 2021. And then it also does not give them the ability to change the date. So they, their meeting has to be held on town meeting day. And <clears throat> this gives them no, no wiggle room around there. So those, does anybody else have any kind of questions to pose before so that Representative Gannon can kind of um, get them in his? OK. So John, do you want to? Sure, thank you, Senator White. Um, for the record, um, Representative John Gannon from Wilmington. Um, so 
one of the reasons I think that we took um, many or most of the sections out of the bill was just because of the time crunch at the end of the session and not having enough time to address them. We asked the Legislative Council to identify the sections um, that did not need to pass this year um, that could be taken up um, in the next biennium. Um, and so that's how we landed on dealing with um, just the Australian ballot question. Um, we did hear from the Secretary of Administration who recommended with respect to that section that we make it mandatory, but then after learning that there wasn't money um, to assist towns um, with respect to Australian, Australian balloting, um, we, you know, did not make it mandatory. Um, and Betsy Ann has explained the whole issue around electronic meetings. Um, Secretary of State's office was very concerned about that. Um, well, we thought that would be a good option that there just wasn't sufficient time um, to address the concerns of the Secretary of State with respect to that. I, I think Senator White, you asked what would happen, you know, if you know so there was a town meeting, say, or a special town meeting in October or something after after the COVID crisis um, had had waned. I think our, our thinking there was that um, the legislature will be back in session in January. Um, and you know, we'll have an opportunity um, to assess the COVID-19 crisis at that time and could modify um, the language in this bill um, if it appears that the, the crisis is over. And I hope that addressed all your questions, but I, I may have missed one. That you did miss the one that I think was the most important, their ability to change the dates of their meeting. That was in the, our bill. Yes, it was, um, and um, I, I think I'm just trying to recall, and maybe Betsy Ann has a recollection of what we decided on that. I do not recall why we did not take that up. Uh, I recall it just being a focus on the Australian ballot issue. I remember at least one of the House GovOps members raising a concern about the authority of a legislative body to decide to move the date and time of the local election. Um, House GovOps addressed that local elections were really the um, main thing that um, needed to be addressed for 2021 since uh, most of the other provisions are currently covered now during the COVID state of emergency. Uh, and so those are section seven and eight of the bill as passed the Senate and the House of Ops just ultimately decided to focus on the Australian ballot issue. It could yeah, have Betsy, been in part, oh, sorry, go ahead. Betsy Ann's absolutely correct. Um, one, one of our members did raise the concern that, you know, a, a legislative legislative body um, could choose to move the date for political reasons, um, not really directly tied to the, the state of emergency, um, either to speed up or slow down um, some action. So that's why I, I think we did not choose to move forward on that provision. Oh, if, if, there's, <clears throat> if there is something going on, they, the only option they have is to do Australian ballot. They, it, well, they isn't have tied, it isn't tied to an emergency. It, it isn't. Is not. So the body could, the legislative body could just decide to do Australian ballot for all the meetings in 2021 without having it be tied to an emergency. You, you are correct, Senator White. The reason we decided to go in that direction is that we do not know when the state of the emer state of emergency may end. Um, and COVID-19 still may be out there. There may not be a vaccine, or even if there is a vaccine, um, there isn't community immunity yet existing. Um, so we wanted to give towns the choice, regardless of whether or not there is a state of the emergency, to make an assessment of the health risks um, of holding an in-person town meeting versus doing it by Australian balloting um, if COVID-19 still existed out there. Any questions, Brian? Thank you, Madam Chair. John, what was the committee vote? 11-0-0. Uh, well, I'll offer my opinion. I don't like it. Uh, and I would rather see nothing happen this year than to uh, concur. Other, uh, Anthony, I'm sorry. It's OK. So just remind me, if we do nothing, which is what I'm leaning towards as well, um, 
we passed some acts already this year. What what would be the state of affairs this this March for town meeting day in terms of if we just did nothing but had current law in place? I guess that's for Betsy. Yeah. So your Act 92 authority only applied to local elections in the year 2020. Um, so in order, for example, for a town to move to Australian ballot for its 2021 annual meeting, the current law would apply that requires the voters, if it's not already conducted by Australian ballot, the voters of the municipality would have to vote in order to apply the Australian ballot to that uh, 2021 annual town meeting. So they'd have to have a meeting to vote not to have a meeting, one of those yeah, things. To go to Australian ballot, yes. Even even though we're still in the same state of emergency, assuming we would be in March. All right, because Act 92 also was not contingent upon there being a state of emergency. It was in light yeah. of COVID, but it just applied generally to local elections in the year 2020. Thank you, it's kind of a dilemma. So can I just follow up Anthony's question? Betsy Ann, the next legislature will convene on January 6th, I believe is the date. Yes. Do you, do you I wanna ask this so you can answer it. Um, would there be time for the next legislative uh, legislature to make provisions for the town meeting? I see John is shaking his head no. So VLCT, uh, there, we had discussed there's that 60 days that are necessary for a town to move to Australian ballot, that 60 days preceding uh, March 2021 town meeting is essentially December 31st of this year. So that's the 60 days that a town would normally need to uh, convert an upcoming meeting to Australian ballot. And then, um, Otherwise, if the General Assembly needed were to make this decision next year, um, you would definitely be under that 60 days that is normally necessary to allow a municipality to prepare the ballots, um, et cetera. What and it would, would be prevent, I'm sorry. What would prevent the General Assembly, if there were a declaration of emergency again, though, to do pretty much what we did this past year and take care of it that way? I think it would just be the logistics of when the General Assembly could get that enacted in time prior to the March 2021 town meeting. And I think maybe, I think Representative Gannon was going to weigh in also in case I didn't cover something that he wanted to address. John? Yeah, no, thank you. Um, no, Betsy, and I think you covered it correctly. There wouldn't it would take 60 days. And I think there's an issue with the clerks preparing um, for an Australian ballot, that's going to be an issue as well. Anthony, and then uh, well, I was going. I think my question was just answered. I was going to ask, can we just change the sixty days? But it would not leave the clerks enough time to get ready to do it anyway. If, if we if we change the sixty days to twenty days or thirty days, it's. I assume that's not on a practical level. That's just not possible to get the Australian ballot set up. It's getting the candidates, for example, on the ballot. If you normally have candidates by floor vote and nominations by floor, instead you'd have to get your candidates that would actually appear on the ballot in advance in order to prepare the ballot. Um, those sort of logistical yeah. issues, yeah, just from yeah, a logistical yeah. perspective without consideration of the policy. Because legally we could change the 60 days. If we, we have the power to change the 60 days, it just doesn't, wouldn't make sense, practical level. Allison? Not at this point, we don't. I mean, we've run out of time to, to change that, Anthony, sadly. Well, that's and we true. Couldn't get it, and we couldn't get it done fast enough, I don't think, uh, in January. Uh, this, it, just to go back, this require, this allows this opportunity only for 2021, is that correct? Yes, that is correct. So it's, it, what we're basically doing is mirroring the opportunity we allowed in um, Act, what, Act 92? 92, yes. So what we're doing is mirroring the opportunity we allowed in Act 92 to basically this one provision we extend through not 2021 uh, with no emergency parameters or anything else, just 
this opportunity for Australian ballot? Yes. So um, any more questions about that or concerns? I have to say that I, um, I agree with Brian that I don't like it. <laughs> um, I don't like the, the entire um, uh, way the bill was handled and that um, all the other provisions were taken out, even though we have already passed all of those provisions. So the testimony on those provisions was not a heavy lift because we'd already all taken the testimony on them before. So I'm very disappointed that we uh, do not have that. And um, I am curious also about why, and I know that this isn't a crucial issue, but why you did not leave in the repeal of the highway funds in there. Because when the towns began to do their budgets in January, they, they will now still be prohibited from mixing their local highway funds with their other local funds? Um, well, legislative council told us that we didn't need to act on that um, at this time, especially because I believe the effective date um, for the highway funds is July 1st of 2021. Yes, but they have to, right? They have to prepare their budgets in they January. They have to prepare their budgets. They can, they can, my understanding is that they, it, they, can mix their highway funds starting in, in July for that year, but they have to do their budget um, before that. So what, anyway, I just, I just was curious as to why, why that wasn't in there, but. So they'll do their budget and then in July, and I mean, in January of next year, we'll pass this whole, but this whole bill Let's hope that and then in July, when they actually have their budgets, they can start mixing the funds. Is that right, Tucker? Okay. Yes, that is correct. Okay. So, Madam Chair. Yes. So, um, I I'm not quite as fussed. I mean, I'm cross that they didn't. <laughs> But they didn't act on more because we kind of gave it to them on a silver platter and I think these were good all strong and good and worthy provisions so I uh, I am really sad that that they didn't do this on the other hand this is one of the provisions we included um, and it is something that is time sensitive for March and something we couldn't act on fast enough to affect a vote in March so I guess I'm leaning to concurring uh, with disappointment <laughs> and, uh, oh, profound disappointment. And that we would then commit to, uh, if we're all back, uh, readdressing these val valuable lessons learned and opportunities for towns when we have emergency, uh, when we go into emergency uh, status that we, you know that we act quickly on these lessons learned for other you know for, for the for the future uh, so i would i would actually think we would want might want to concur on this it's a gives towns a valuable opportunity uh on on the australian ballot and uh you know it's not every, it's almost nothing of what we wanted but it's better than nothing i think yeah i, I agree with you and it the bill didn't affect just towns it affected other it affected yeah, yeah. it affected a lot of other people and so we'll just have to um take it up in january if if we're back but chris we haven't heard from you yet uh so you know i think your cover memo said something like the bill may have been decimated but that dramatically understates things since decimating is only killing one out of every 10 people as a punishment <laughs> Um, right. in a core and where the ratio is a lot higher here but despite all that and all the reasons everyone's already noted I think we're we'll provide more service to towns if we send them some provisions for instance in support of timing for orderly town meeting and conducted in a safe way 
um, even if it might be uh, challenging, you know, for us to see so much gone. So I would support concurrence um, and. Uh, well, we really have no choice. Yeah. I mean, we either don't do anything, which leaves the towns in a bind. Yeah. Yeah. We have no ability to send it back with further amendment. Yeah. So yeah. we have no choice. Right. We, we are stuck between a rock and a hard place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A very big rock and a very hard place. So <laughs> anyway, I would I would vote to concur just to help keep towns moving and you know there'll have to be timely action when we get back. Okay. okay. Anybody else? All right, does everybody agree with that? No, I'm still firm on, I think there's some presumptions here that we're still gonna be affected by COVID. And, and if you take the whole year of 2021, I don't think that could be true. So I think there's some presumptions being made here. I don't agree with candidates not being uh, required to at least put forth some effort to get on the ballot. I, there's a lot of things I don't like about it. Yeah, I don't like that either, but. I, I, my, my um, <clears throat> reason for accepting it would be that <clears throat> we, in order to um, help towns out with the March town meeting, we, we need to give them some ability to, to have it by Australian ballot, as much as I hate Australian ballot, and I wish no one would ever use it, but um, we need to give them that option. My, my thought is that when we come back in January, I will not extend that all the way through the year 2021. I would tie okay. it to an emergency. Oh, okay. And then I will support the committee's decision and vote to concur, as long as we are thinking that we would have a chance to refine it with all due respect to Representative. Right. So the thing, Madam Chair, yeah. so it, with Brian's, I mean, I agree with Brian's concern. I, I, uh, I, I don't actually, we have seen that co it's not ideal, but you could certainly get signatures. And I do think that getting signatures shows support in, in your community in whatever district you're running in. Uh, so we could, it, so the only election that it might affect is the current, is the town meeting this um, March yeah. 21. And then if we change the law, um, it would be going forward. That would be the only election that would be affected by that. Okay, yeah. I'll go along with it. But it's not just it's not just the town meeting. It's other meetings that they may hold throughout the course right. of the year as it's well. Any municipal body. Right now. So I think yeah. I've, I've, I have an issue with that, and I think not to be repetitive, but we're allowing them to change the Australian ballot even if there's no emergency, right. which I think is kind of uncalled for. There's no reason to do that, but. On the other hand, I tend to agree that if we can do it with very profound disappointment, I mean, I'd be willing to go along with it. With and regard Anthony, I think that next year, whoever is back needs to take the, <clears throat> the um, initiative here to change that during the year 2021 so that yes. there needs to be tied to some kind of an emergency or some kind of a reason for them not to be able to meet. I, I, I do not want to see them just all throughout the year use Australian ballot just because just because we told them they could. Right. So I, I I don't know if I'll be back and I don't know if I'll be in government operations, but assuming I am, this will change. Right. Well, you're always talking about wanting to give towns the ability to do more things just because they want to. And now the one thing we're going to allow them to do because they want to is something we don't want them to do. That no, we're not. We're allowing the legislative body here to determine the will of the towns. True. In terms of whether they use Australian. But, just, but really just for the first half of the year. I mean, because well, we will hopefully there will be a new law in place by the time we work on it. And House GovOps feels more comfortable with hearing the testimony for a third time. OK. All right. So well, there we are. Is everybody okay if I report this out in a five yeah. zero zero yes. vote with profound yeah. disappointment? Yes. Yes. Dana, 
the the last thing I would throw in as a sap to all of us is that you know when it comes to public health things, we I think we we have generally erred on the side of being cautious. So yeah. if we can't tell what next spring is going to be like, um, I think it's okay that we're setting people up cautiously yeah. in terms of public health. Here, here. Okay. Thank you, Representative Gannon, for joining Thank us. Thank you, John. Uh, do, do no harm over there in the house. <coughs> Thank you, no Betsy Ann. And I'll note your profound uh, Representative, I believe unhappiness with what we did. Yeah, so yes. uh, Representative be on the floor in two minutes. Did, yes. Did, um, I have a quick question for Representative Gannon. Did you draw the short, the short straw for having to come to this committee and talk? No, to I asked him. <laughs> Senator White asked me. <laughs> He's the vice chair. Right. Well, you're great. Okay. Anyway, our last committee meeting I, of the year, I believe. So, bye. Oh, bye, -bye. bye. And thank you, Jeanette. And thank you, Betsy Ann and Tucker. We love mm -hmm. you. Thanks, thank Tucker. You. Thank, thank you Betsy. so much. Thanks, uh, thank you. See you. See you Allison, don't trip.